So what is now the frequency response? of a digital filter yeah, so obviously we know that h of s if we if we use h of j omega here so we are getting the response of a of an analog filter Obviously, with um, h of something which is which is z. So if we write this like this, h of z, we get the response of the digital filter. Response of the digital filter. So now. This is here obviously z. So what is our definition of z again? So z is z to minus one we know is e to minus s t. So now then z is just e to s t. And with that we know that our s we define this for the frequency response as j omega. So by substituting this in here, we are getting then e to j omega t out there as a response. So now usually in a in a sampled in a sampled system, so if we don't don't know t anymore, we normalize t to one. So h of t h of e to j omega. response in a sample system with t equals 1. So it's just our that we're getting our normalized frequencies out there. Okay, so now let's um, describe our digital filter. Let's our so if we have a digital filter so we have now an h of n so no longer an h of t and then we've got our input here is x of n and we've got our y of n here now so the same idea so this is our impulse response so we now we can transform transfer this into x of z and we can again multiply this with h of z because that's what our Laplace transform does and our z transform does the same because it's just sampled and we have our output y of z and then we can characterize our filter this is h of z. So we know that in order to characterize our filter we can generate a frequency response with with this term here, so e to j omega and this gives us the amplitude response and again with arc of h of e to j omega, we are getting the phase response. And again, so if we define this here as phi, then d phi of omega divided by d omega, this gives us then the group delay. So this is here tau g. Let's just um, get an intuitive 
idea of the frequency response. Yeah, so imagine we have our h of j omega, yeah, so our analog response. Yeah, so the analog response if we put this in the in our s space here with um real and imaginary then this j omega is basically running along the imaginary axis here so the argument here of that so if you're looking at this argument here then we could say the response might look like that so it's going along the imaginary axis here and then this is obviously going down to minus infinity here and this is here going up to plus infinity so now if this is here real and imaginary again but now we have our h2 e2 j omega and this is our our sample system so now this e2 j omega here this argument here this is just a rotation on the unit circle yeah, so this is here one, and um, this is here, this is here j. Then this rotates on the unit circle here. So, so this is rotating around here, and coming back and generating this, this response over and over again. So if we have a similar response here, this would map basically into something like maybe drawing like this here. Yeah, so but what we see is here that this response is now cyclic. Yeah, so this repeats after after revolution. And so the response here response is periodic. And this is just another effect of our sampling problem. So if we are sampling then we are creating ambiguities and we see the frequency ambiguity here again in this frequency response.